Hey, I'm Alex Rackle from Board Game Co, and this is Two Back and Octa Back, where we're going to go through all the crowdfunding campaigns, talking about the games, the pledge levels, the stress goals, optional buys, all of that and more, and of course, should you back it or not. I missed last week, guys, at WSBG, which does mean that we have a lot of games to go over this week. Specifically, we have 28 games to go over this week. That's a lot of games, so what I'm actually going to do to make this video a reasonable time is we're going to have two Two Back and Octa Back videos this week. We're going to have one today and one on Wednesday, covering 14 games in each video, so just to make things a little bit more absorbable for you. With that, we're going to go ahead and start off as usual with our Cult of the Now. Our Cult of the Now, a reminder that you can go ahead and get great games available now instead of waiting till available down the road, waiting a year and a half, waiting to see if they're actually any good. And today we can go ahead and check out Unsettled and Framework and Planets 1 and 2. Basically, I mentioned this a while in my Week in Review, but uh, Oneb started doing retail partnerships again and whatnot, and we can see that with their games over on Game Nerds. If you want to go and order some Unsettled or some Vindication, they have both those available on Game Nerds for you to go ahead and check out. Uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and dive into the crowdfunding campaigns. As usual, we do talk about value in these in this video series, and that does mean that no, you should not back these games to make money. Rather, when you're backing games, I do try to focus on whether games hold their value or not so that you can go ahead and turn around and get other games instead if they don't work for you. It's about, it's about extending your enjoyment of the hobby. I did a full video on that. You can check that out. It's linked down below. With that, let's go ahead and start off with our not yet funding category. We have Casca Take Over the Mafia from Tlama Games. This one almost certainly will fun. We currently had 111 backers, three days left to go, 2,833 pounds raised so far, or euros raised so far, so this one should fund, but this looks like a dice placement game, a dice placement uh, the mafia game, we're going to be taking assigned dice behind your screen, trying to uh, get control of various areas over here, you have 25 euro for the base game over here, very affordable as far as the game goes, but also very straightforward, just one single pledge, nothing too crazy, they had another game over on GameFound already, I can't remember the name of it offhand, it's more Egyptian theme, it looks like they're focusing on just basically, you know, getting putting out some retail games, with an initial crowdfunding presence, but you set your dice, you get resources from locations, you mark mafiosos with matching dice symbols, and you fight for the loyalty of the mafiosos. Fairly straightforward, doesn't look like it's a huge, you know, buzz or attraction. Like their last game, it looks like it's gonna cross the finish line, but nothing too crazy. As far as should you back or should you not, will hold this value. The price point of the game is actually pretty cheap, the shipping's not too bad either, but of course, once you add it all up, and the lack of demand in this, I'm just not as confident there will be demand for this game, which is the biggest issue you're gonna run into here. Uh, speaking of which, we have Hedge Maze over here. Hedge Maze also struggling to fund from uh, from, from uh, Flat Out Games, 271 backers, $12,412 raised so far, out of a $20,000 goal. This one still likely could fund, it could cross that finish line, but I'm not confident what will happen here. The last time Hedge Maze was on Kickstarter, they went ahead and canceled the campaign as it was struggling to fund, they waited a little bit, brought it back, and it's still having struggle taking, uh, still having a hard time taking off. I don't know what it is about the game that's not pulling people in, it might just be the initial art. Uh, speaking for myself, I, the gameplay itself actually does look compelling. I haven't played the game, but I have seen it at conventions, and it does look like a game that I would enjoy between the polygonal pieces, between moving your hedge mazes at your hedge wizards or whatever it is around the around the board, trying to gather gnomes, making sure spots line up. It does look like a decent puzzle. For me, the art would never have pulled me in, so I do wonder that just this art style for me is not working for me, but that means now I'm in that projection effect where because it's not doing well, I'm wondering if that's the bigger issue for others. So I am curious of your comments down below. Let me know in the comments what it is about hedge maze that is or isn't pulling you into the game, because this is not doing nearly as well as a flat out game that I would expect it to do, and so uh, that's a flat out floodgate games that I would expect it to do, and so I'm curious what that reasoning is. But past that, the game's gonna have these polynomial pieces, you're stealing gnomes from each other's uh, hedges as you wander around, making sure your spots line up to get extra movement in the game. It sounds like a fun little puzzle, but again, it's not pulling people in, I don't know where this one will go. Uh, currently, the pledge level is gonna be $49 for the on a $70 MSRP, that's gonna give you the base game and the expansions, as well as the deluxe components, the wooden token upgrades, the double layer player boards, all of that. Uh, $70 MSRP, always take with a grain of salt, especially on a uh, deluxe, uh, you know, extras and all that. But as far as should you back, should you not, will hold this value. I'm not sure if it'll be relevant or if we're looking at another cancellation, uh, but I would say instinctively, again, the demand's just not there, so I would put it more in the you're taking a large risk category. Moving on over here, we have Dungeons of the Oak Dell. This is going to be a print and play game, so we're not focusing on value here, just on the game itself, because ultimately, you either back it and play it, or you don't and don't, is not much to really sell here. Uh, past the PDFs, which I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do. So 891 backers over here, uh, $15,000 raised, 28 hours to go. You're coming in at the final hours over here. This is definitely fun to though. We have Dungeons of Oakdale, the spiritual successor to Villagers of the Oakdale. Uh, this is a, like I said already, it's a print and play game. These little markers you see, there's little markers you can you can get here. They give you the STLs to 3D print those like, you know, covers to basically make your pens into swords or whatnot. But the game is going to have you going dungeon crawling. You're going to be rolling dice around and grabbing those dice and you are using those dice for a variety of things, including taking out the 
the town the monsters as you draw to the various pips. So every dice is multi-use when you gather it, so you're trying to be mindful of what to do, and you can't actually use a, a ruler whenever you have these little fights over here. You can't use a ruler to measure things out. You kind of have to do things by 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 eyeballing it, which means you are constantly trying to figure out whether your lines will crisscross over the monster or not, which sometimes is easy when you have the base of the monster, but other times when you're looking at the little lines over here, it might be a harder thing to juggle as far as what, whether you think you will or won't hit the monsters as you go. So a fun little engine going on there, in addition to, of course, the regular dungeon crawling aspect. Uh, the base game is going to run you 6 euro, and the full game is going to run you 12 euro for all the various maps and everything, and then if you want both the original the original game as well for Village of the Oakdale, that's going to be 20 euro to get the full bundle for all of that. Uh, again, not much to hold this value here. This is a print and play. You print it, you either play it or not, although I will say they do have a printing service over here. This printing service over here is going to give you the opportunity to go ahead and print the actual game for 20 euro plus shipping over there, so if you're in the US, you are looking at 35 euro on top of the price of the game to have it professionally printed. I don't know what the quality will look like at the end of it, but if you want to turn this game into something that you actually will play, that is a different way to go about and do that. Uh, moving on over here, we have Heroes of Might and Magic 3, the board game, Stronghold, Conflicts, and Cave Expansions. With two days left to go on the campaign, with 4 million euro raised so far, 18,282 backers, Heroes of Might and Magic from Arkham Studios is back on crowdfunding with, well, more. Three more expansions specifically, Stronghold, Conflux, and Cove expansions, and that's on top of the already abundant amount of expansions this game has. Heroes of Might and Magic is basically a adventure game. It's an adventuring game. This, I'm not going to be going through all the stretch goals over here. There's so many stretch goals over here. They're actually broken into two classes. There's the crystal stretch goals and the regular stretch goals, giving those extra miniatures and deluxe components and all that. You can see the little stars here marking what's in the crystal set. Uh, but you can go ahead and get both of those, of course. Uh, you also have the returning back gift of crowns for the king. This basically marks your expert effects. In the game, there's going to be an element as you level up. You can play more expert effects of cards, and this allows you to mark those as you play them, keeping track of your things. It's a nice little quality of life plus a premium component and all that. But the basic idea of Heroes of Might and Magic, the board game, it's going to have scenario-driven play with a solo, co-op, competitive, all the various game modes. I believe there may even be team mode, if I'm not mistaken. But the basic idea is you pick a scenario and then you try to accomplish those scenario goals better than the other players or with the other players depending on co-op versus competitive and you're going to be trying to do whatever it is that thing might do. Whether it's adventuring to a certain tile, whether it's getting a bunch of mines, whether it's trying to take down various baddies, whatever it is you're doing in the game. But then from there you have your hero as you wander around the board going to the various locations, having various encounters either with each other, you know, fighting each other in the game or alternatively fighting the various uh, denizens of the game world as you go to these different levels encounters, choosing your difficulty mode in the game and then going to a separate side Board where you manage the various cards of the various enemies that are going to be attacking you, trying to outpuzzle them and basically just attack better, do better in the game, trying to uh, mitigate or roll better against the various enemies you're going to be facing off against while building up your characters across the course of the game, leveling up your hero to get stronger and stronger and stronger. There's a lot to do in the game, a lot of things going on. The expansions are going to give you way too much gameplay. I highly recommend checking out the uh, game, the, the 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 crowdfunding video, the game found video, so you can see some of the examples of the expansion things they'll add, including the various seas sailing across the ocean. Oceans. Seems like a fun little extra element being added to the game. And each expansion adds full new classes, full new roles or places uh, with their own unique player boards, the unique heroes, the unique units that they have in the game, just giving you tons and tons of gameplay to go through. The rewards over here, the various things you can back on its own are just an absolute ton of stuff to go through here. We have the all in for 329 euro. That's going to give you, like it sounds, the all in. It gives you full everything, the full spectrum of gameplay, expansion, stretch goals, everything you get your hands on. The basic pledge for 89 euro, which will give you the core game, the tower expansion, and stretch goals, as well as the regular stretch goals over here. That's going to give you all the basics, just what you need. Uh, it's going to give you more than enough gameplay. If you're on the fence over here about whether you need this game or not, and you're like, well, there's so much content, the base game is going to give you a ton to go through. You will not be lacking. And for all the new content over here, Stronghold, Conflicts, and Cove, as well as the stretch goals, you're going to get 109 euro. And then for the all new big box, if you want that giant big box over here, 109 euro for that as well. And the crystal pledge for 129 euro. And the all new big box with shaded miniatures, for 139 euro, not everything's going to be shaded over there. The uh, models, if heroes and units are shaded, the props are not shaded. And then we have all new shaded for 139 euro, and all in big boxes for 329 euro, and all in shaded for 404 euro, and all in big boxes shaded for 404 euro. Those are basically options for how you want your stuff stored together. That's why there's not much of a price difference. It's more just a selection of what you want. But past that, you have the individual breakdowns of the various things over here, as well as all this gear and keychains and and hat caps and hoodies and tons and tons of stuff for this game. There's a lot to go through over here. I won't focus on any individual, well, 
how to best do this over here. So first of all, as far as more content around the game, there's tons of gameplay content around any number of things from the base games to expansions, there's previews, there's reviews, there's unboxings, there's so much content out around this game already. As far as the should you back or should you not will hold its value, the short version is yes, at least so far. Looking at the original Heroes of Might and Magic campaign over on Kickstarter, and then how that has done in the secondhand market, this is a game that has clearly had demand in the secondhand market. And that's also evident by how well this campaign is doing compared to the first. This campaign is doing more than double what the first campaign did. I think more, I have to double check. At least it's on track to be more than double the first campaign. Again, reflecting the fact that there's a, not just more content here, but there's a lot more people who are jumping in on this now that the game has actually been validated as a game experience that people are enjoying, that the reviews are out there, people are having fun with it, and more people are like, well, let's go ahead and jump in on this experience. And so overall, I think that will continue to hold true for the continued content. Obviously, obviously it's also based on a, an IP that has a long fan base that's just, you know, here for the game. So here's a Mighty Magic 3, the board game. I do think this is one that will hold its value. I'm not going to break down each individual pledge as far as what's better or not. I will say generally a core pledge is pretty safe. All in pledges are pretty safe. Things in the middle are usually a little harder because you have to find people who want that specific thing. But overall, from looking at the original Kaffin campaign, it does seem that regardless of what pledge level I saw, people are selling that for more than what they paid for it, which means it is a safe back. Moving on over here, we have Hunt of the North Pole. Hunter the North Pole Second Edition Solo Game of the Month from Gay Barrett. Uh, this is going to be a four, fourteen thousand dollars raise, five hundred sixty-six backers, four days left to go. This is a North Pole, a holiday-themed version of the Hunted line of games. Uh, Gay Barrett has the whole Hunted line. He's been bringing them back with Second Editions on his Solo Game of the Month, and now we're seeing the North Pole one brought back Second Edition. This was already existing as well, and you can go ahead and get your hands on it now. Uh, pledges of this one are going to run you twenty-four dollars for the base game, five dollars for, for the print and play, and then five or six dollars for the shipping, depending on what you're getting over there. Five. $6, I think it was international six. Yeah, five dollars for the U.S. and Asia, and six dollars for the other international regions. As far as should you back or should you not, will hold this value. Short version on all these games, I think they're less likely to hold this value, and that's definitely true of Hunted over here, Hunted the North Pole, which is doing a little worse than his typical solo game of the month series. Which means I think there is less demand, and less demand translates into less demand down the road. So if you want this game, by all means, this is likely the easiest way to get your hands in it. But if you are looking at holding its value, this is likely less so. Moving on, we have Rayman the board game, sixteen hundred and fifty-eight backers, two hundred twenty-one thousand dollars raised. Eight days to go, another IP joins us over here, another video game IP joins us uh, from, uh, you know, Heroes of Might and Magic to now Rayman the Board Game, brought to you by Flyhouse Games. Uh, I will note for the record over here, because I should do this whenever you have a camp, whenever you have a company with a bunch of outstanding campaigns, I should note this, Flyhouse does have a bunch of outstanding campaigns and a bunch of upset backers, meaning you can expect to see people in both this video comments, as well as over the crowdfunding comments, talking about their experiences over there. Uh, that requires a full deep dive on its own. My goal is to make sure you're at least informed that there is controversy, drama, and upset backers which there always are in any campaign, but if there's a more critical mass, I'll try to at least inform you of it, and then you can go, go from there and do further deep dives and research, just making sure that you're backing responsibly. Past that, as far as Rayman the board game over here, we have 1661 backers, $220,000 raised, and this is a game that you can spend anywhere from like $60, was it? Was uh, The base pledge was $50. For the base pledge, $50, 65 Canadian, all the way up to hundreds of dollars to go all in on this game. This is a platform or redesigned or rethemed, retinkered, almost as a racing game. That's how they're kind of managing the platform. Platformer. I do recommend checking out the Kickstarter video. I think they did an excellent job conveying the fun of what the game could be. I haven't played the game, so I can't speak to as whether it's good or not, but it does look like a fun game where you can be selecting cards, using the initiative value, trying to run around the board over there, and then, you know, slap various things to gather those tokens, or as you go through the game experience. So it does look like it nicely mixes a racing game into a platformer in a way that seems to work really well, but that's very much, uh, you know, just from my own two cents seeing the game, as opposed to actually getting my hands on it. But either way, $50 for the base game over here. You have all these pre-painted miniatures over here. Uh, we have uh, we have 148 for the Origins Pledge. Let's see if we can scroll down and give you a better example of the pledge levels over here. Uh, we have the, I don't know if they do over here, but we have $148 for the uh, Origins Pledge, which will give you the Rayman, the, the base game, the expansion, five to six players. That's what you see over here. Expansion, five to six players, as well as a set of 10 skins. These are gonna be the various miniatures you have in the game. So if you want these pre-painted miniatures, that's gonna be included in there. And then the deluxe tokens and all lucky tickets. Deluxe tokens are exactly what you see here, and the lucky tickets are going to be effectively the stretch goals. They're included at every pledge level, including the $50 pledge level. They're basically the equivalent of stretch goals. They have scratch-offs of the various things they're going to be unlocking from various gameplay content to uh, things you can shoot to, uh, you know, miniatures, all those various things in the game. Uh, for the Legends pledge, you have $259 for the all-in pledge, and that's going to give you all the various things as well as the extra miniatures. So if you scroll back up over here, let's see if we can scroll back up. If you scroll back up, you'll also get these various deluxe tokens, these deluxe extras and whatnot. So you can get that. I believe you get the card sleeves, if I'm not mistaken. I have to double-check on the card sleeves. 
copies on that on that pledge. But you for sure get the various extra, you know, these these Barbara large scale figures for Rayman, for Barbara, for Globox, and for Grand Minimus. You're getting larger figures. So the scale of those compared to the basics are the basic board game figures and then the larger scale models. So you're basically getting a collectible aspect when you're looking at the 259 pledge level. That is not just gameplay. That's gameplay and more for the game. Uh, as far as should you back or should you not, will it hold this value? This is a very hard one for me to judge because on the one hand, 1600 backers is already doing pretty decently. It has an IP that's going to hold pull people in down the road. Uh, the game looks like it's well designed so far, so like I'm intrigued by it. It looks visually attractive. There's a lot of things going for it that do make me think it is the kind of game that would be more likely to hold this value. But we also have it's not doing as well as I would think it would be doing, which is another factor over there, and that could partially be based on the drama around Flyos, or it could just be the fact that there's less confidence in a platformer being turned into a board game and how well that's going to do. So. This is in a weird spot where I would say the, the price of the game combined with the uh, combined with the issues with Flyos does put it into a place where I'm kind of like back it if you want it, but definitely make sure you're aware that there's a risk going on here, both in terms of whether it'll hold this value as well as, as well as in terms of Flyos and the various issues they have as well. So just it's not so much a judgment call as to whether it will or won't, and more so it's definitely in the risk category. It's hard to it's hard to judge it either way. Moving on, we have Tamari from Postscriptum over here. Tamari from Postscriptum is going to have uh, 860 backers. 85,000 euro raised, eight days left to go. A uh, post who previously bought you Shogun no Katana, as well as other games as well. That's just the most recent crowdfunding campaign. And Tamari is a classic theme explored from an original angle. Uh, this is basically going to be a Euro game played out across three rounds of play, where you're doing a whole lot of things from uh, gathering various cards, a little bit of engine deck building, a little bit of, uh, you know, gathering cards and placing up the various symbols on your board, uh, getting your sphinxes out there, a little bit of tableau building for the sphinxes you're going to be placing out, as well as the priest rising up the priest track. You can check out my review of the game. There's a ton of things going on. And of course, we can't forget the pyramid in the middle where you're going to be giant dropping the various weather marbles to see how the weather affects the various uh, fields. There's also worker placement. I forgot that. There's worker placement. There's uh, all the various mechanics. In fact, they have it over here. Worker placement, engine building, resource management, tableau building, set collection, hidden resources, bidding, simultaneous action selection. They have all this stuff going on. They are a lot of mechanics. And of course, I don't even know what you call the mechanic for... Um, the weather and the marbles. Marbles, on top of all those. But they blend all those together in a game that does work very well. Uh, the game is going to be, let's see, we've got the pledge levels over here. Pledge level is going to be 99 euro for the deluxe uh, game found edition of the game, but you can get the base game version of the game for 59 euro. They do say the retail edition, which will have less extras, is going to be, I believe it was, was it 77 euro? It's something like that. Let me see if I can scroll up to the very top over here. If we go to the very top over here, they had it broken down. They had here, the game foundation for 59 euro, and the retail edition is going to be 69 euro, 10 euro or more, and it's not going to have those extras. Now, do keep in mind that the shipping can run you 15 to 20 euro, depending on what you're getting or where, where you're from and all that. And so you are look well, it could be more than 20 euro, depending on where you're from. But I think the game found versus the deluxe edition was 15 euro or 20 euro, if I recall correctly, which would bump up that price point already a decent amount. So you are looking at more than retail in terms of the cost. And of course, MSRPs are not final price points. So this comparison is a little flawed in terms of the apples to apples nature of it. But that said, of course, it is true that you are getting extra stuff over here. You are paying more for it, but you are getting extra stuff, so there is that extra aspect for it. Speaking of which, you have the Deluxe Edition for €99, Euro, which gives you the base game as well as the two expansions, the Amat expansion as well as the Upgrade Pack, which is Deluxified components. So that's going to be the, the, the €99 Euro pledge over here. The base pledge is going to be €59 Euro for the, including the Temeri Game Foundation, and then if we scroll down, you can see all the various stretch goals and unlocks and all the things you've been getting in that Game Foundation, and the Mat Expansion Pack actually introduces a new content in the form of new various weather mo uh, weather marbles that will be dropped in, in various ways as well as various unique player powers added to the game and the upgrade pack over here is giving you more deluxe fight components as well as a nice little uh obelisk that's going to be your marble dropper for the weather and then past that they have various games of their other collections from katana to florenza to wendaki to kepler 3042 all those games are available in optional buys as well as far as should you back or should you not will it hold this value and all of that i'm skeptical it will I, the price point's not bad but i do think that engine 67 backers is not as high as they've seen in their campaigns in the past I think it's going to translate into lower demand for this game. It is a very good game. It all comes together very nicely. And the question is whether that will convince enough people either now or down the road. And again, I think the price point, while not being bad, once you factor in the shipping, I think it's one that's less likely to hold this value overall. Moving on to Scarabray and the Anarchy. 2,374 backers, $284,000 raised, 10 days to go. Coming to you from Garfield Games, Scarabray and the Anarchy are two different games, two standalone games that, I mean, past sharing the artist. I think they share the artist. It looks like they share the artist. Uh, I don't know why they're in the same campaign. 
game, but not that that's a problem, it works. Uh, Scarab Ray is going to be a Euro game, which I won't really go into the mechanics because I think that would be hard to do in any short condensed form, but you could check out the Brothers Murph uh, video, which will cover both, you know, I think they have a gameplay if I'm not mistaken, but they also have an overview in that gameplay. With not, let, me, let me scroll down to the Scarab Ray videos. Here we go. Through the game house, there we go. We have an overview as well as the gameplay from the Brothers Murph, Brothers Murph if you want to check that out. But then past that, we also have the Anarchy. The Anarchy is going to be the spiritual successor to Hadrian's Wall. Designed by Bobby Hill, so same designer over there, and it's going to be another intricate roll and write game. Let's see if we can scroll through the game overviews over here. Uh, the Anarchy is going to give you more intricate roll and write experience as you try to be mindful of all the various boxes you have to tick as you go up any number of things. Again, you check out a variety of content in the game, including a uh, preview from uh, Jenna from the Board Game Garden and more if you want to get a better feel or sense of how it plays. But even just looking at this board over here, it'll be very familiar to those of you who have played Hadrian's Wall. It's giving you that kind of game, but supposedly more so. I am very intrigued. I love Hadrian's Wall, and I'm very intrigued to see how the Anarchy will play out. Uh, for the game over here, for the for the campaign, you have $47 to go ahead and get your hands on either game. That's before shipping, obviously. $47 or $47 for either. And then you get for $94, I believe it was. $94, you get both, which is really just $47 times two. You can get both games instead. Uh, both copies will come with extra stuff if you get it on the campaign. So Scarab Ray comes with promo action tiles, and the Anarchy comes with promo tokens. So there are some small promos being added in the game. But past that, uh, as far as should you back or should you now, will hold its value, especially once you factor in shipping. Generally with Garfield games, if you're US-based, the answer is not as much. Uh, usually if you back it on the campaign, you're doing so, you're helping support the creator, you'll get your game earlier, and you are getting some of the promo stuff, but in general, their games have wide retail availability and often at much better price points to the point that usually their games don't make as much sense to back on crowdfunding. If you wanna get the game, you can get it much cheaper when you wait to retail. And as far as holding their value, the extras you get usually are not as worth it, and they usually don't do as good of a job holding their value. So they're a great band. They're a great company. They very much cover. They always go into it very transparently in the why back now. They're like, hey, this is the situation. This is the story. And there are many reasons to back their games, from early access to trying to lock down this promo stuff to supporting the creator. There are reasons to back it, but if, you're, if your primary motivator is the best price point or holding its value, I'd recommend picking this up on the second market instead. Moving on over here, we have Trust Me, a strategy game of trickery by Martini. I'm not going to try to pronounce it, I apologize. 2,450 backers, $38,000 raised, 10 days to go. Coming to you from Thunder... Oh my gosh, not Thunderworks. Thunder Griff. Thunder Griff Games. I always I always pause, I have to remember that. Thunder Griff Games, coming to you from Thunder Griff Games. This is Trust Me. It is a small little game of, well, kind of basically bluffing. You're basically going to be placing cards down every round, and if people trust you, then you can go ahead and get the things you need. But there's a catch, which is if people, if they trust you and you said the truth, you get the thing. If they trust you and you lied, you get more things. But if you lie and you get caught, you get no things. So it's kind of one of those three options. If you played games like Sheriff Nottingham, that's the basic idea. You can try to try to play it at play out the players, try to go ahead and figure out whether they're going to call you and flip things. This very much seems to lean into the gameplay style of Sheriff Nottingham in terms of what the game does. You can check out the uh, the trailer for more concise information, but that's basically what the game is doing. As far as the pledges over here, we have the one euro trust me pledge. This pledge is a trust me. You know, pay what you want, pay whatever you want. They are trusting you for the game called Trust Me. Although keep in mind, shipping starts at eight euro, so as much as it's one euro, it's not really one euro, it's already nine euro. And just taking a quick look at the numbers, it does look like the average price point people are spending on that pledge seems to be around eight euro. It's hard to say for sure because it's also the uh, make a pledge without a reward. But so in, other, in, other, in any case, they have. it seems like they have an average pledge of around eight euro per backer on that Trust Me pledge, which is not bad considering the fact that right now we have Made in Wonderland, which is a bit of the series of three games, for 30 euro and for the game. So it looks like they're valuing it at roughly 10 euro, and that's up to you to decide how much you actually want to pay, with some people paying above 10, some people paying below 10, that's how you get to the eight euro uh, number over there. Although I guess in theory you could have no one paying above 10, you could have people paying nine and seven and it would average up to eight euro too, so I guess not entirely true. But either way, that's the basic game over here, but again, factor in shipping starts at eight euro, which keep in mind that money is mostly not going to them. I don't know, so I don't know the numbers here. I don't know the numbers, I don't know. Every company is different in terms of what they can do. My assumption with the dollar euro cost, uh, the, the minimum threshold, and the shipping, my assumption is that they will m possibly make something on shipping, but it is hard to say for sure. Uh, in general, whenever shipping is, what's the right word for it? When shipping is um, not proxied, when it's subsidized. When shipping is subsidized by creators, it's always across the board as far as which creator is subsidizing shipping, and it's very much case by case depending on their shipping terms, the games in question, and all of that. I will say that Hunted is shipping their games at five or six dollars, so I do think the eight euro possibly is padding their risk over there, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. Just be mindful of the cost and all that. Anyways, moving on over here, we have a way first tale. The journey begins. Oh, as far as uh, we'll show you back or show you not, we'll hold its value. I'm skeptical it will, although obviously if you back it for a euro and turn around whatever, just the, the cost of shipping alone, I think it makes it a hard sell 
well as far as should you back it, should you not. Uh, moving on, moving on over here, we have a Wayfair's Tale. The journey begins. 981 backers, 10 days to go. $65,000 raised. This is basically the big box version of a previously print and play roll and write games. Uh, they brought this game to crowdfunding as a roll and write, and then that was very well received. It won a golden geek for the roll and write and all that. And so it's coming back to crowdfunding, this time in a big box with uh, four maps. I think a fifth map if you get the expansion, if you get the deluxe edition of the game. And it's basically taking that core gameplay. Here you see the frozen north over here is going to be in the deluxe edition of the game. But it brings you that core gameplay of rolling dice, and then players are going to be selecting dice from a pool, and then using it to assign to various, uh, ca various characters on their sheet that are going to guide them in different things they can do as they wander around and explore the overland map. It's a fairly straightforward game, but one with a lot of thinkiness as far as what you're trying to do, how you're trying to do it, and then learning the ins and outs of each map as you basically use this roll and write exploration adventure game, Away First Hail, to get to what you need. Uh, the base game is going to run you $49, I believe, no, $55 for the base, base version of the game, and then the deluxe edition is going to run you $74, and that's going to give you some extras. Let's go ahead and show you what the base game gives you, and then we'll go to the deluxe edition after that. Base game is going to give you four map packs, 32 two of each map, as well as four double-layered player boards. These are going to be the static things you don't really draw on or write on in any way. We also have the hand-drawn cards, as well as the single-layer character cards, and then the, the punch board player discs, the, the various dice over here, the various wooden components. Again, even the base version is a deluxe game. Uh, the various resin cubes, the quality pens and all that, all these various things. A solo campaign, if you want that. So a lot of things going on in the game in the base version. The deluxe edition is going to also give you the various extra tray over here. It's going to give you the upgraded acrylic uh, quest standees, as well as upgraded deluxe metal and Animal player discs, as well as the upgraded double layer character tiles. So this, that's an addition. The, in, even in the base game, the core character board and whatnot is double layered. But in the deluxe edition, your character tiles are also double layered, as well as upgraded marbleized D6 and mini D12 dice sets. And it's also going to give you the Frozen North over here, the deluxe edition exclusives for the uh, extra map over here, as well as the extra characters and fortune teller cards in the game. And then for thirteen dollars, you can get a laminated map pack add-on, basically giving you four laminated copies of each of the four maps. So you go ahead. I think it's a four laminated copies of the four maps. I think it's for each of the four maps, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's the goal. Yeah, four copies of each of the four supplied maps with a pre-laminated suitable, a uh, pre-laminated fin finish suitable for wiping off. I don't know if the Frozen North is included in that. I hope they do find a way to include that in either in the core box or not, so you have that all matching up. But I didn't see anything about that offhand. But that's basically what we have up here as far as Wayfair's first Tale. Uh, as far as should you back it, should you not, will it hold its value? It's a little hard to say. This is definitely doing well overall, but $55 or $74 for a roll and write game is a little priced high compared to other things. Like when you think of Qatar, is a role player's tale and how much that deluxe version cost versus this. This is definitely priced high and I think it's doing well, but I don't know if that will carry over to fully holding its value down the road. Especially when you factor in that some of the games, especially if you don't get the upgraded sheets, you are slowly burning through the game. Now, most people will not play through, most people will not need all 32 copies of each map, but if you think about it, if you're playing a four player game, 32 copies of a map means you have eight plays on each map, which it will run out slowly but surely. So I think the high price point combined with the fact that there is a limited resource there, most print and plays are fine people don't play as much as they think they would like to, uh, but I do think this is still going to have a harder time holding its value fully. Moving on, we have Ludos, the Ancient Games Collection, uh, the Africa series this time. Last time they brought you Asia, this is from Lemurie Games. Last time they brought you Asia, this time they bring you Africa. Lemurie Games has historically done, uh, tried to basically bring you games that were... How to, how to phrase this? They, they try to uh, recover or maintain, maintain games from various regions. So you have these series of games that they're trying to bring back to life. They're like, hey, these are ancient games. We want to preserve them. We want players to experience them. We want these hand-picked games that fit in your pocket. That's the goal of the various uh, series over here, the Ludos Asia and the Ludos Africa series. Uh, Ludos Asia did fairly well, uh, very well received, and Ludos Africa is back, this time with four ga pocket-sized games from Mali, Ghana, Nigeria, and Madagascar. And we have four different games over here, and they have the pay-what-you-want bundle as well if you just want to travel pouch, but they have the full $41 for the Ludus Africa entire collection, we have the print to play for $7, and we have $79 for the Ludus Asia plus Africa collection bundle if you want to get the original Asia bundle as well. Uh, the games over here are basically going to be four different games, let's see if I can scroll down and show you them over here. Uh, we have uh, Yota, Yota over here, which is basically going to have you deploying your camels, moving them around, and jumping around by capturing all the opposing camels. We're going to have uh, Dwar Orardi, which is basically a Mancala adjacent game, you're going to be moving your beans around over here, trying to gather 20 five or more seeds, not beans. And then we have Dara. Dara is going to have you summoning your pieces onto the board, moving them orthogonally, and capturing by creating lines of three as you summon and move your things, and you want to capture ten enemy pieces. And then we have Fanarana over here, which is going to have you uh, moving your pieces to an adjacent space, uh, and approaching or luring and capturing all the various enemy pieces. That's going to be Fanarana from Madagascar. And that's basically going to be the four games over here. As far as should you back or should you not, will it hold its value? Honestly, it's hard to say on this one. I tried finding information on Ludus Asia, but because of the nature of it being a 
looped up series of games, I couldn't find any sales either on Asia or on the board game Geek marketplace, which means this is squarely in a, I just can't find any evidence or data of how the original Ludos game sold, so I can't really say how well this one will do either. I will say if your goal is to help them preserve these games and make them come to life and all that stuff, this is a great, very like, a nice, it's a nice kind of, instead of constantly making new games all the time, there's something nice about the idea of finding these these classic games and preserving them. So I do think that's a nice little thing, but ultimately it comes down to whether you're gonna play these games and what your goal is with supporting this, but I, I can't find anything on the whether it'll hold this value or not. Moving on, we have March of the Ants, the ultimate ant civilization game. 3,700 3, backers, 10 days to go, $238,000 raised. Coming from Tim Eisner, March of the Ants is the new released version, new, the new newly done version of this is the new one, right? The Ultimate Ant Civilization game. Am I looking at this right? Yeah, I'm looking at this right. Sorry, give me a second. I, I have various campaigns up when I'm looking at different things, and I wasn't sure if I was looking at the old one for a second. I'm good. Uh, either way, they're bringing back the March of the Ants Evolved Edition. March of the Ants is a 4X game that's been around since 2015 uh, from, from Tim Eisner with multiple expansions. It's been on crowdfunding multiple times, uh, and it's a it's one of those games that's very much an underrated gem. It's a game that's well-loved but doesn't get the hype and buzz that other 4X games do, possibly because of the Ant theme. This is the Evolved Edition of the game. Uh, they go to be giving you, uh, you know, retweaks to the game design, retweaks to the actual gameplay, changing things up over here, and bringing this classic back to life uh, for $49 for the standard edition, or alternatively $65 for the deluxe edition of the game. So those are going to be your two pledge level options, one of them bringing you elements of the expansions to your table. Basically, the, the original game had two expansions, and this one's doing a, a way where it kind of adopts the expansion elements that worked best or best received, and incorporates that into a new expansion, as opposed to fully bringing everything back to life, some things that just didn't necessarily need or, need or feel added value enough to the gameplay. Uh, but basically, you're going to be controlling your ant colonies in this game, and you're going to be expanding and evolving your ants. Easily my favorite part of this game over here is the way you can vastly diversify the way you build your ants based on the different body parts and the cards you go over it, bringing you hundreds of combinations of ant evolutions or the way your ants operate as you try to figure out whether you're going to uh, exterminate the other ants, coexist, uh, wander around this 4X game, exploring the various hive, and that's basically what we have over here for March of the Ants. Now, the Evolved Edition brings you new artwork and graphic design, updated cards and hexes, rebalanced mechanics and streamlined rules, resting tiles of grant bonus resources, great tunnel battles give combats and tactics, and wooden ant meeples to your game. Tons and tons of wooden ant meeples, and that's basically the standard edition of the game. Here's your uh, ant meeples for the game. Uh, past that over here, uh, we have the Meadow Hexes, we have the Beyond the Meadow Hexes, the Great Tunnel, and then the Round Score Mat, and all of that, the Centipedes, the Wooden Centipedes, and then the Deluxe Edition is going to be bringing you Deluxe Punch Board Nest Mats, the 30 Wood for Woodful Art, uh, the, the 30 Art tokens for the, 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 the wood and whatnot. Uh, we have the Predators and Prey expansion, which is included in the deluxe box, and if you don't get this in this one, it'll be available separately, but if you want to include it in the box, this way they get it included in a specific deluxe box. Bringing you a whole bunch of things from major workers to predators, to predator meeples, new ant cards, new nest chambers, beyond the, new beyond the meadow hexes, all those new things for the game. As far as should you back or should you not, will it hold this value, will it not, all of that. Uh, looking at the original March of the Ants campaign, that's a game that did do just fine as far as holding its value. If you look at what people have paid for their original game, uh, years later on the second market, people are getting that money back uh, for the most part, possibly losing a bit on shipping. So it does seem like this is one that will likely hold this value. There's definitely a demand for it. Again, 3,700 backers is pretty nice. $238,000 raised. There's a lot of things overall going on in terms of the general demand for this game. Like I said, it is underrated compared to other Forex games out there, but it still very much has its audience, and considering the consistent demand for the original March of the Ants, the last crowdfunding campaign, I think this is likely to hold its value overall as well, at least getting it, you know, the cost of the game, maybe not the shipping. Moving on, we have Emberleaf. Emberleaf, 2,900 backers, 10 days to go, from Frank West from City of Games. Emberleaf is bringing you a, uh, a card dangling game. You're going to be working to rise from the forest floor, clear danger areas, and rebuild your home in this game, but ultimately the main thing you're, you're working with mechanically over here is a card dancing engine. That's basically where as you gather cards, every turn you're trying to choose whether to place cards or dance your cards, shift them to the left. Uh, when you place cards, there's going to be multiple kinds of abilities. The abilities will give you, uh, you know, uh, what's called things while they're in your tableau. There's going to be abilities that give you points while you play them, or give you abilities when you place them. There's going to be cards that give you abilities as you move them, and there's going to be cards that give you abilities as you dance off the row, so as you move off the ed. edge. So you're constantly trying to weigh up what the right move is at any given time as you work with this dance drafting engine. Again, we have on play, slide, and drop off. Place a card or slide, you choose every single round. So it's very much leaning into a semi-new mechanic. Uh, we've seen things like this before, in fact, even mentioning Garfield Games. Garfield Games, if I recall correctly, Viscounts had elements like that. Was it Viscounts? Did Viscounts do that? Now I'm not totally sure, but Ancient Knowledge did things like that. Ancient Knowledge had tiles that were sliding down, so it's not totally innovative, but the way it's structuring it definitely seems to be leaning into something that's not been heavily, heavily done uh, with this card dancing engine. Uh, the cost of the game over here is going to be $63 for just the game. You get just the game. Uh, 
It's a retail copy of the game. It's Emberleaf, period, full stop, done. You have the deluxe edition of the game, the retail edition plus a bonus hero pack for $70, which means basically an extra $7 for that bonus hero pack. And then we have the Kickstarter edition for $101, giving you all the various extras for everything. And we have the full deluxe edition for $154 for, well, all the extras and then some and everything. Uh, as far as should you back or should you not, will it hold its value? It's hard to say. Uh, Frank West, City of Kings, they've had a lot of games across, they've had a lot of games do a various different things as far as how well they've been done, how well they've been received, starting with the City of Kings. Then they had their smash hit, the Isle of Cats. We also had, they had a few games in between, and they most recently had Race to the Raft, which did very well, and now they have the Emberleaf Deluxe Edition. I will say, if you look at Race to the Raft, which I'm going to use that as the baseline here for how to grade this, because it is hard to know at any given point which game is going to be your next smash hit or not. Race to the Raft was received well enough. It's not necessarily the best game, but it was received well enough. It's a 7.4. In general, it's not after. If you look at the secondhand market on Race to the Raft, it seems to have definitely taken a bit of a hit. Meaning, if people who back Race to the Raft and then turned around and sold it later, we usually lose in the shipping cost, but then additionally a 20-30% on top of that so you definitely it's not a game that held its value you could still get money back for it if it's a game that's not for you you could turn around and sell it and you'll get something back but you're going to definitely lose on that game although the flip side is if you look at something like isle of cats isle of cats is much better so it is hard to say for sure which one will this be will this be another isle of cats that is incredibly well received and everyone's hunting down the copy or will this be a race to the raft a game that is well enough received and does well enough and it's hard to say over there i will say the price point does have me a bit intimidated the price point for the game relative to other games in the same space does seem a bit on the high higher end, and between those two factors, I'm going to definitely put this in the risk category. If this is inc received incredibly well, it of course could hold this value as people try to hunt down all the stuff for it, but I think this is likely more in the risk category that it's likely going to take a bit of a hit, whether it's on shipping or some of the value or both on Emberleaf over here. Uh, moving on, we have Railroad Trials over here, 2,786 backers, 11 days to go. This is our last campaign. This is our last campaign of the day. We have 2,700 uh, backers, $320,000 raised, 11 days to go. Railroad Trials is bringing you, well, Railroad Inc., but not actually. Railroad Inc is a very popular game from Horrible Guild that basically has you uh, rolling, right? It's roll, rolling and then drawing various routes on your board as you try to fulfill various goals. Railroad Tiles has some degree of that DNA, but it's very much a different beast. Uh, they say it best on their page where they say, if you like Railroad Inc, you'll almost certainly like Railroad Tiles. And if you don't like Railroad Inc, you might still like Railroad Tiles. And I, I think that's a fair thing to say based on what I'm seeing with the game. This is very much a tile laying game. You're going to be gathering tiles, trying to place them down to your route, and you're trying to score for various connections, as well as a ton of different things from the various goals in the game from uh you know making sure you have your largest hexagon or i think it's right not hexagon rectangle the largest rectangle you can do that's in a it will give you extra points as well uh scoring points for all the lengths of your various routes uh scoring points for what else was there for the connections you make losing points for the connections you don't make this is basically a tile lane game with a ton of ways to score points including the world expansion that you'll get on kickstart over here uh, it gives you the opportunity to go ahead and get all these various uh, little extras that you can incorporate into the game where players get the opportunity to go ahead and gather one special placement of each of these various types, choosing how many to incorporate into the game, giving you a lot of gameplay, that's before you even get to the expansion. So it's basically a tile lane game with tons of content unlocked, all the unlocked stress goals over here, gives you a lot of stuff over here for the game. Uh, played out across eight rounds, placing various tiles down. You're going to have a tile selection aspect where you're choosing tiles, but the later you go in one round means the earlier the, the, the earlier you go in a round, the earlier you go in the next round. So you, similar to a game like King Domino, you're choosing as far as when to save your optimal draws to get the perfect batch of tiles that will reward you the most. Uh, versus when you want to go a little earlier, getting fewer tiles, but giving you more agency towards going earlier next round. So you're going to be playing that little puzzle as you draft various tiles into your grid, trying to line up everything as much as possible, and it's getting scoring as many points as possible, uh, you know, in order to get, well, in order to win, in order to win in the game. As far as the pledges for the game, you're going to have the base game over here for $45 for a basic copy of the Kickstarter Special Edition, uh, gives you the rural expansion and all that, so you are getting that Kickstarter exclusive stuff over there, plus all on the structural, all unlock stretch goals. For $95, we have the Advanced Edition, which is going to give you a free copy of the rural expansion, three other expansions of your choice, because we haven't even gotten the expansions. If we got over here to the Advanced over here, the Advanced is giving you three expansions of your choice from all the various expansions. Where are the expansions? Can we see the uh, expansions down here? There were a bunch of expansions. Here we go. Here are the expansion over here. We have the lake expansion, building a serene la uh, lakescape. Lakescape, is that a word? Uh, by the way, I should note all the expansions are designed to be used one at a time, but with the world expansion. Now, I don't know if you can mix things up past that, but you're similar to Railroad Inc., you incorporate one expansion, the base game, and then modular play. It's a very similar structure to the Railroad Inc. game. But we have the lake expansion, we have the forest expansion to protect natural reserves, we have the canals expansion, romantic sightseeing tours on Railroad World, we have the country expansion, build farms and raise cute animals, and then the energy expansion, power your city with green energy, and the monuments expansion to discover majestic monuments, as well as a desert expansion to take on the challenges of an era desert. That's a lot of expansions. Uh, and you can pick three of those over here. If you want to get the advanced tier, you pick any three expansions, which I guess you could do, but like, I don't know, like, 
You have 798 getting just the base game. That makes sense to me. You have 285 getting the three expansions, and I imagine you have a lot more who want all the expansions. For 140 euro, you get all the expansions, and then for limited edition, I think over here, I don't think you needed that over here. I think the I think the collector's edition is going to be enough to get you that full big box with all the expansions inside, as well as additional components for the fifth player. Obviously, I can't say how a fifth player does in this game. Sometimes it's great, sometimes not so much. All expansion components in one box, giving you a big box railroad tiles game over here. And then for the limited to only 200 available, you're getting an additional collector's edition, even more exclusive with a limited edition art print and personally signed by authors as well as a hand-drawn tile by illustrator Francesco Di Benedis. Each piece completely unique to you. So over here, that's going to be the collector's edition and we have 103 people currently taking that limited edition. I just said it's the collector's edition. I meant limited edition. Anyways, that's what we have over here as far as and I think you get the add-on separately as well if you want the expansion, you get them separately. As far as should you back or should you not, will hold this value. It's hard to say. Again, sometimes these games come down to how well they're received. But looking at Dungeon... Dungeon Fighter, I'm, I'm tempted to say this was likely to hold this value. If you look at the original, original Dungeon Fighter from a Horrible Guild, that's a game that they brought back to crowdfunding with a whole big box and everything, which basically meant they were bringing back a big box and deluxe and all the stuff together for an established, well-received game, and sure enough, that game did hold this value. If you look at Dungeon Fighter on the second-hand market, if you want that big box for that, people are, are paying more than what people backed for it to get their hands on it, so it's one that has held this value over time. I think that will likely hold true, especially for the deluxe edition over here, because there's a few ways to get this. You you could just get the base game over here and just lock in your exclusive stuff and the rest of the stuff will be available at retail or at least the rest of the expansion components will be available at retail and call it a day. That's one way to play it. The other way to play it is to go full all in and get the deluxe big box. Not necessarily the $200 pledge but the 140, 140 euro pledge because at least you get that, that full all in collector's box which again I think there will be demand for after the fact uh, down the road. That middle road where you just get three expansions I think at that point if you just get the expansion separately maybe just get the base pledge and wait for retail and everything else. See if you like the game. Give yourself an opportunity to breathe. I should give myself an opportunity opportunity to breathe, uh, while you try to see if the game is right for you and just get the expansions down the road. So instinctively, I think you either go the cheapest pledge or alternately go straight to the 140 euro to get the big box, but I think it is likely to hold this value. And that is what we have over here, which means it's time for the Pixel of the Week. A Pixel of the Week generally is going to have one game that is the uh, game I think is most likely to hold this value, and then secondly, we're going to have the game that is... Um, that, uh, that is my personal interest pick of the week. Uh, for the game that's the most likely to hold this value, where were we over here? Um, I think, so let me just find over here. We have Heroes of Might and Magic, the board game, which I think is the game that is most likely to hold this value overall. Uh, if you look at this one, this one, the first edition did just fine, and I think this will likely, well, the first, you know, base game, all the various things did fine, and I think this new version with all the expansions as well will continue to do fine. I think people will hunt this game down. Heroes of Might and Magic has a lot of, uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of fans over the years. There'll always be someone who's interested in this game, even if it's not to play it, even if it's just to collect it. And then for my personal interest pick of the week, we're going to have to go with Railroad Tiles. This is easily a game that, I mean, I love Railroad Inc. I like tile laying games. This game might let me down. I don't know yet. But overall, this is easily the game that I am personally most interested in checking out and trying. That is going to be Railroad Tiles from Horrible Guild. And that's basically what we have for this week, which means for upcoming, for coming up next week, uh, we have Unmatched Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles launching tomorrow, I want to say. I think it's launching tomorrow. It's launching pretty darn soon. And then we also have Valheim the board game launching tomorrow as well uh, over on Game Found with us. Uh, 33,000 people following this game. Uh, we have both of these. I guess we have Unmatched Adventures. So specifically, this is Unmatched Adventures. So it's not just Unmatched. It's the second version of Unmatched Adventures, which was received incredibly well. And then Valheim, the board game from Mood Publishing. And that is what we have for our two back or not to back. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, I hope you have a good one. You want to know what makes me want to throw up a dartboard on the ceiling? <laughs>